coach Brian Kelly, Notre Dame head coach, opening up with uh, Rice coming up this weekend. Coach joins us now. How are you, Coach? I'm doing great, Dan. Thanks for having me on. Uh, do you know how good your team is? I don't. I don't. I, I know that we've got some talent offensively, and I know that we've got some athletic kids on defense, but they're very young. So it's going to be fun to watch them play. They're, they're going to get better uh, as the season um, progresses. But, you know, we're playing, you know, an incredibly difficult schedule along the way. So we're going to have to grow up quickly. Give me your confidence level, scale 1 to 10. Uh, probably seven. Um, and if our defense uh, is able to mature and, and um, you know, really gain some confidence early on, it could be even higher. I think we're going to move the football. I think with Everett Golson back, um, we're going to be able to, to do some things offensively until we get our defense some more experience. The uh, academic issues, suspensions, how does that play into uh, your team or, you know, the early part of this schedule with the uh, suspensions? Well, th there were three starters, you yeah. know, on our football team. So, obviously, you know, you have, you know, guys that have to step up in those positions. And each one of those positions in particular, you know, put a stress on, you know, other areas in terms of what you're trying to do. But, you know, we've we've handled that before and we've moved past it and, I think every program in the country has to deal with either injuries or the loss of a starter here or there. So um, internally, we've already handled that uh, as a unit and, and moved past it. How long are they suspended for? Until um, I'm told the investigation is complete and the uh, process from an academic standpoint um, has been um, finished, and that means hearings and um, they get their opportunity, obviously, to meet before the provost. Uh, and, um, again, their their decisions are made that are outside my purview. But um, I understand that that's, that's something now that school is in session uh, will happen here pretty quickly. We're seeing a situation with USC where you're listening to a player tell you a story. You know, coaches go through this all the time. You know, somebody tells you something, and how, how tough is it that – you, you want to believe in your players, but sometimes you can't believe the story they're telling you. Well, I think it's like anything else. <laughs> you know, you're, you, you want to trust and you want to believe in all of your kids. And, um, you know, I, I think each one of the, the circumstances that, that you're dealt with as, as football coaches, you're, you're never shocked because you're dealing with 18 to 21 year olds. I think we, we, we kind of forget we were, we were young too. And mm -hmm. sometimes we've made, foolish decisions um, as well. So I think I, I've kept it in perspective in 24 years. I'm never, I'm never really shocked, but um, I get disappointed because sometimes you're, you think you've created an environment. I think I said this the other day. It's kind of like a parent when you think you've done all the right things and, and your son or daughter still makes a, 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 a mistake. Um, you feel that way, but, but you know you're prepared for it um, in the business that we're in. Talking to Brian Kelly, Notre Dame head coach, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. Why weren't coaches honest a couple of years ago when, and I'm talking about big name coaches that I had on, and I said, are you in favor of a playoff? Now everybody's in favor of this playoff. Everybody loves this 14 playoff. This is the greatest thing that ever happened. <laughs> why, why weren't they honest back then? Why couldn't you I say, don't... look, I love a playoff, but right now we have the BCS and this is the system we have? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, you know, sometimes – Coaches operate, you know, in 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 a, in a focus that is just on their own um, team and and what's in their best interests. Um, you like the playoff? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I came up through that yeah. system, and so it's always been something that I've wanted to see. And um, maybe, maybe I can be the, the the one outlier that says four is not enough. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'll get that conversation going. I think it's a great start, but, you know, with five power conferences, somebody's going to get left out, and uh, certainly that's going to be the next topic of conversation in the off season as to, you know, uh, how, do, how do you get more. So I think four is a great start. I don't think it's enough. What do you think? What's a good number? I think eight. I really do. I think, I think eight does it, and if you can get some maybe first-round home site uh, games. I think that adds a little bit more to the collegiate spirit of uh, the game itself. Um, you know, maybe some teams got to travel into some geographical areas that they've never traveled before. I just think it adds a little bit more if you can get down to eight. 
Big Five conferences, do you, do you see them just playing under their own rules eventually, Coach? I don't think unilaterally, but I do think that the interests of the Big Five will definitely um, influence some legislation that, say, the University of Buffalo may not have to or can um, – support because of financial considerations. So I, I do think that there will be uh, a bit of a separation there. Um, and, and I think that that's what you'll probably see as, as time goes on. But, you know, I still think there'll be a governance. Uh, I think there'll be uh, a stronger conference, um, you know, leadership as well. But I, I don't think you'll see the five just kind of uh, writing their own rule book. Do we need the NCAA? I, I do think we do. Uh, I still think that there has to be um, a governing body that oversees intercollegiate athletics, certainly football and basketball, um, you know, are, are the two big that, that kind of run this thing. But I, I really do think that there's got to be overall um, a group that kind of oversees intercollegiate athletics. Is this the last Notre Dame-Michigan game that uh, we're going to have? I don't think so. I don't think so. I, obviously, the schedule is is not for one for a few years, but um, you know the geography and and the and the want and desire is there. You know, we, we've got a complicated schedule situation, but um, this won't be the last time we play. Is there a school that you've asked to play that won't play you? No. No, other than Grand Valley State. Um, <laughs> other than that, no. I, I think it's, Grand it's Valley been... State is ducking you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you believe that? Yeah. Actually, I think if the number was right, their athletic director would say <laughs> yes tomorrow. Um, but no, I, I, no, it's been it's been a great reception across the board, and as you know, we're trying to. To, to try to create some some new rivalries and some new games that that we haven't played before. Obviously, te- Texas next year, home and home. Um, you know, obviously, you know, there's been the, the Georgia uh, talk of that game. Um, so, I like I like the fact that we're reaching out and we're getting great reception from from the other end. Best excuse you've ever heard for somebody being late for practice? Oh, I, I got a classic. Um, there, uh, we had a young man back when I was at um, um, Cincinnati that when he was coming to practice, a wolf came out in front of him and it forced him to run back inside to his dorm room. And that's why he was late to practice. Of course, we were in urban Cincinnati. We don't think there's many wolves in Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was classic, so I gave him a break. I said, that's the best excuse I've ever heard, so you're fine. Don't worry about it. Thank you, Coach. Good luck against Rice. Take care, Dan. All right, Brian Kelly, Notre Dame head coach.